<sighs> ah, Mingzi, hello. Come and play, or come play. <laughs> So watch the movie come play. Sorry, I just wanted to bring my cat into this video. She's uh, not in the house very often. But yes, the movie come play. This is a movie that I watched recently and I'm only reviewing now because it stood out to me. So it's about this demon called Larry. And he's, in, he's from another dimension and he's able to communicate to human beings in this world from behind screens like computer screens, TV screens, phone screens and he mainly goes after kids and tries to manipulate them into reading this, you know, book through an app and whenever they read the book they basically open like a portal where he's able to attach himself to them and terrorizes them. The main character of this movie is a little kid who's autistic. I kind of figured that he was because he wouldn't speak much at the start and he uses this app on his phone, kids with phones nowadays. And it's an app I'm kind of familiar with. I don't use it, but um, where are you going? Where are you going? No. No. Hmm. Is it because I'm looking at the camera and not looking at you? So uh, an app on this phone that people who are autistic would use to communicate with people. And he has people who are autistic that <coughs> maybe don't know how to speak or if they're feeling overstimulated and overwhelmed by their surroundings, uh, they will use the app to communicate. Typing into the app what they want to say and the app reads those words out. So that was the thing about this horror movie, what it had is that this child is autistic and it can't he can't communicate, he can't explain to his parents and teachers and all what's happening. They have a speech therapist to try and help the child communicate and say words. But at the very most, all he can say is like the yeah, F, like oh, f, f, f. You know, he can't really say much. So that's a main factor. That's what made this movie more terrifying. More terrifying for the kid because he can't tell the, everybody what's going on. And even if he could, would anybody believe him? The movie was nicely shot, nicely color graded. I like the aesthetic of it. And uh, the parents do actually clock on that there is something wrong and that there's a fucking demon coming after the kid. But uh, the ending of this movie was pretty much bittersweet. You know, it was sad, but it came around full circle. It was one of those movies that was thought out well. And most horror movies these days you know, or typical slashers where they have lots of sex scenes and all and teenagers getting drunk and there's no because they can't think of anything you know, any good dialogue or uh decent enough story. Whereas this movie didn't do that. It didn't have to because the person behind it, you know, was creative enough <laughs> not to throw that crap at us. So it's kinda of movie that, you know, the pacing was good and keeps you on the edge of your seat to an extent and was fun to watch. It was I would definitely watch it again. I'd recommend it too. Not the best film ever made, but better than most horror movies, I will say. And the way that they handled the you know tackled the issue of being autistic, you know, it was done with sensitivity and really well. And it, sh it did show you what it's like for an autistic child to grow up in society and the type of world we live in. You know, and it also showed what it's like for his peers, his teachers, parents, and friends what it's like for them, you know, to try and communicate with them and to cope with them. And they can easily misinterpret what an autistic child is trying to say. You know, when... <sighs> but, uh, I like that they brought this in. You know, the movie also made awareness on autism, what it does and how it affects people. Now, I, I'm not one that's easily triggered. I'm pretty thick-skinned. But uh, it was interesting because... You know, like autism has always been around. Uh, it's just people didn't know an awful lot about it. There was lack of awareness about it. And, you know, I have a friend who is autistic 
and whenever they're overstimulated, um, they have to use the app to communicate because it's just too much for their brain to process. Whenever you're autistic and you struggle to communicate um, on those days, it's kind of like having brain fog or if you're really drunk or you know what you want to say, you know, the information's in your head but you're struggling to convey those words, you can't think of the right words to say. It's kind of like that. Like I'm autistic myself and I didn't get my diagnosis until I was like 17. Technically my diagnosis is Asperger's on the um, autistic spectrum. And for a long time, I never told anybody I had. I only told people if they needed to know, like a need to know basis. And the reason being because, you know, whenever I was younger, like, you know, fucking 10 years ago, you tell everybody you're autistic, they would infantilize you, like, talk down to you like you were a kid, treat you differently. And then when they started talking to you, they realized, okay, so you're, you know, you're conscious. Yes, I'm conscious that I have it. I'm not fucking mentally five years old. Um... But uh, I like now that these days, they have like autism or in shopping stores, you know, where parents can bring their autistic kids to the shop whenever the lights are dim, the music, there's no music or very little music, and it's to accommodate uh, those parents so that they can bring their kids in and the kids don't get overstimulated by busy shoppers, by music and bright lights and all. You know, and this movie, you know, introduced autism. Well, it didn't say introduced it from the start, but it, it brings autism into it. And I thought it was pretty clever the way it was done. My, my, with me, I don't get bothered by bright lights. For me, it was always sudden loud noises. If you went up and screamed in my ear, I'd punch you in the goddamn face for it. Um, I can go into nightclubs and bars because I know to expect that there as I'm walking up, the music's coming. But say if I had like friggin' noise cancelling headphones on and I was blindfolded and put in the bar and you took them off or I'd jump like what the hell you know it's, it's, it's kind of like if you're in the car and you left the radio on the night before and you had a full blast turn the radio off and you go back in the car the next day turn the radio on you forget that you left the volume at its maximum and then the music is just loud pitched and everybody jumps that's what it's like for me it's just like for a lot of people with autism you know uh, it can be a trigger and you, you, Mingzi, are you autistic? No, you're just black. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, you're biting me, are you? Hmm. Mingzi, 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 Mingzi. Yes. Hmm. Hasn't been well for a while. Anyway, back to the movie. The casting was great. You know, the actors that they got. Play the characters were likable, and the kids also being bullied in the movie too. And they got some good child actors, you know, who, whenever they were picking on, it, you know, as an adult, you really just want to go up to one of the kids and be like, you know, the kid's, the kid's autistic, it can't help being the way he is, and you're being an asshole right now, you know, but whenever a film an actor makes you do that, makes you feel like that, way, you know, you praise the actor for it because they're doing a really good job. You know, I've seen adults, we've all seen adults playing parts and can't act for shit, but you know, it says a lot whenever a child actor is able to make you feel emotions, make you feel annoyed, doing a good job. Oh, are you wagging your tail, are you getting mad at me? You're still purring now. Ah. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Yes, really. You know, it's not often you're in here and you're yapping about it. Hmm. Say, uh, you just keep purring, just keep purring. <sighs> so, my cat's are such a fucking distraction. The mother, you know, for some reason, the kid was always close to the dad, and I'm looking him in the eyes. And part of being autistic is that uh, they struggle to make eye contact. For some people who are autistic, uh, making eye contact with another person can be painful, or it, it makes it takes you know extra energy and effort. It can overwhelm them if they have to do that there. I can do it. You know, I had to learn how to freaking do it. But uh, the mother, you know, felt that maybe her son didn't love her because he never really looked her in the eyes. And it's not until the end of the movie where the demon wants to kidnap the kid and he's, the kid's about to take Larry's hand and the mother jumps in and takes Larry's hand. Don't you dare. Don't. And then she ends up uh, dying. But in that moment, right before she dies, her son looks her in the eyes. So she got, you know, finally got her wish in the end. 
you know, that's what it took, unfortunately. And then after that there, um, the only other lady has gone missing or she's dead. Like the dad, you know, has the son at the house. And then he hears laughing and giving goes downstairs. And we think, oh, is it Larry? Is Larry playing his games again? No, uh, the ghost of the kid's mum is, ho- is holding the kid. And, uh, sorry, Maxie. They're, they're dancing together. Like she's lifting them up and slowly spinning him around in the living room. You know, that's where it's sweet. Larry lost, but, uh, alright, alright, you go down. Fine. Twat. Oh, you stuck your fucking claws on them all right. You bastard, you. Yeah, it's sitting there looking at your lips. Yeah, there's one time he scrubbed me. Drew blood, and they started licking his claws afterwards. Dick. Now he's licking his hole. So, yeah, that. <sighs> and Larry is able to absorb all the electricity in the surroundings, and that's how he's able to go about. If you go somewhere where there's no electricity, like a field, as they do in the movie, there's no electronics, Larry can't get to you. Whereas if you have like your phone on you or any electronic on you, he can make his way to you. He can find you. But uh, good film, good film. Now the cat's just lying on the floor. Usually he loves sitting up here. You feel you freaking fall asleep up here. And now he's yapping looking down. Just sitting on the floor with the badger. I think that's all I have to say about the movie. Definitely go and watch it. You know, it's I just put it on one night, fancied a film, and it was the right one and got lucky.